Rick, um, just looking back at kind of the final 30 seconds there with having Devonte in uh, for defense, how pleased with you were, were the def with the defense that he played? And then what do you say to him after the game with the way that the free throws were? Well, just what you would think. I, we put him in to do the job and he did the job. He played great post defense, uh, came up with a big rebound because we knew we're going to, we knew exactly what they were going to do. We knew the other matchups that we wanted to have and we knew he would fight as hard as uh, you know, do what he, we knew he'd guard him. We, we absolutely knew that he would guard Herb Jones, and he did probably four different times in that one possession. He came up with it. We all feel bad for him that not, didn't knock those down or would have given us a chance to take the lead, but I'm proud of him because he did the job. We asked him to go in there and do his hard work and his, and his determination got us that possession and uh, tough situation to put anybody in. You know, we they haven't played, but that's how much confidence we have in him. And He's, he's so loved by his teammates. Everyone's hurting for him, but yet uh, I'm proud of him because he did the job we needed done because we, again, we knew exactly what they were going to do and uh, he went and he, and he shut it down. Yeah. Rick, what do you feel like the, the difference was there in the second half um, in, in terms of maybe how Alabama was playing, but also how you guys responded? Well, first of all, I'm really proud of our guys. You know, we played Alabama twice, and we've yet to play them with a full roster. We didn't have a full roster in Knoxville. We didn't have a full roster today. Not having John Fulkers in minutes hurt us. I, all, all you got to do is look at – we got when they started making their push, we were tired. We were trying to uh, – and some of those turnovers were a result of that because our guys played their hearts out on the defensive end. You look at what, what we did, I think we guarded them as well as they've been guarded all year. I think our guys did an unbelievable job of sticking to the we, – we said we don't care if they shoot 43s, 15, 15 of them is not going to beat us. We're going to get the guys that we want to shoot them to shoot them. And for the most part, that happened. We rebounded the ball well and got out and ran. And a uh, great job today with deflections. And when they started coming back, there's no doubt that we were fatigued. And I heard one of you guys ask the question, what makes those turnovers come in flurries? And I think what happens is that – you know, we get we it, some of our youth shows up when uh, they see that they, they want to go down and get it right away. Where I was concerned coming in with uh, um, with uh, E. Pons getting in foul trouble. I mean, because he, he's playing terrific, and I like was really concerned about that. And but looking back on it, Josiah was like a pot, I think a plus nine in the game, and him getting in foul trouble was huge. We. During those times of the game, when, when we're struggling like that, that's when he really knits it all together. And we didn't have him as much as we wanted to in those situations. And I just felt like our offensive rhythm, when we got a little fatigued, we, we got away from it. But again, I'm really proud of our guys. I mean, I know how hard they played, how bad they wanted to win. And, uh, you know, six ranked team come, you know, we, we talk about turning it over uh, 19 times. We turned him over 17 times. And uh, we didn't get – we a couple of times early in the first half, we didn't get what we needed at the rim, and we, and we got it there. Uh, like I said, deflections were huge, but um, I'm, I'm proud of our guys. I really am. I Looking back, there's always second guesses. I wish I would have done a little bit something different there at the end of the game to help them a little bit more. Uh, I think because we got different things we use in those situations and uh, not having folky or, or, uh, or especially just sign it situation because those are most of the situation we work with, with those guys. And uh, so that's, that's on me. But uh, again, I'm, I'm just really proud of our guys. Coach, in the first half, you, the offense was playing very well. You guys had 40 points. Do you think that was one of your best, if not your best offensive halves all season? Yeah. I mean, I think we played well. I, I do offensively. I mean, you know, I still, what were we, uh, we were seven for 25 from the third. No, we weren't. What were we? we were seven for 21. We fumbled the ball some, you know, that's what we got it. We, when we get into the gaps, like early, you know, we picked up charges, you know, they picked up some charges. They, again, it's so much of what everybody's doing right now is personnel driven. And, uh, uh, with all that said and done, I mean, think about it. Ticket made a terrific play, uh, gave us a chance to take the lead there and against the sixth ranked team in the country. And, um, I don't think if you, if, Coming into this game like that, if you ask me, I told the team at the half, I told them at halftime, they're going to make a run. All good teams make a run. I said, if we're if it turned around the other way, I would tell you the exact same thing. No different than we were at Florida. I told them at halftime, we're going to make a run. They know we're going to make a run. When we when we make that run or when they make that run, we, that's when we got to, you know, really come together. 
to really execute. And, and again, we had our chance. We just didn't get it done. And, but again, I can't tell you enough how proud I am of these guys overcoming what they had to. Losing John hurts. They lost Primo. Uh, but uh, I'm proud. I think I think this tournament's going to help. With Uros did some good things through the tournament. Uh, Olivier. Um, uh, again, ticket. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, again, I'm proud of these guys because we had to make do with some lineups because of Folky being out. And that's what we've had to deal with all year. Just once we think we're getting on in a rhythm, something happens. And I can't give these guys enough credit for hanging in there. And I know this, they're excited about next week, and we should be. Grant Rainey, David Haskell, and Joe Rexroad. Rick, if fatigue is an issue with those turnovers in the second half, what do you try to do to eliminate that issue heading into next? Well, we hope we have Folky back. We hope we can get into a routine. We hope that Josiah James is not in foul trouble. You know, two of our top six guys, you know, really, you know, Joe did some things, obviously, but when you get those fouls, it's hard to continue to play as aggressively as he wants to play. But uh, that's, I mean, that's, that would be, you asked me the quickest, easiest thing is that. But when that's not there, like today, we tried to slow down and, and I think, you know, to give our guys a chance because we know our players' body language and we know we're going to need timeouts and, and we tried to use them when we could strategically, but uh, we, we tried to slow it down a little bit just to let them get their breath on the offensive end because we knew we we're going to have to fight really hard on the defensive end. But in those situations, when when I felt like they the momentum swung, really swung, was when we, again, started turning down shots that led to turnovers. Do you expect Fulke to be back, please? I don't know. I haven't. Uh, we haven't really discussed it. You know, we uh, just, you know, we knew we weren't going to play today, and had no idea if he'd be ready to play tomorrow. We had, we do, we just talked about it today, so I, I don't. Rick, have an answer I guess a follow up on that subject. What would the timetable be? Is that is that something on John that you would make a decision right before your NCAA first round game? And a quick second part to that is John did post on social media that Omar Payne reached out to him and said he made a mistake. Do you consider that case closed, or do you think he should be facing anything further? I'll take the first part of that. The uh, nature of John's injury being a head injury, he's going to be evaluated daily moving forward. And with the other, you know, I, I know, I, again, I've got great respect for Florida and their program. And Mike uh, White texted me right after the game, and, you know, he was upset, as any coach would be. And But I've sold people before. I, I've, I've been in situations like that over these many years. I've been in it either as a head coach and assistant coach when something like that happens. And I've and it's happened a couple of times with me where the person that did it, you at least expect them to do it. Sometimes in the heat of battle, things happen. You don't want to see it happen. I mean, and, and there's tremendous regret when it does afterwards. But, you know, Mike, everyone reached out to us after the game. Uh, he, he did, uh, Omar, I think, did last night or this morning with John and I know Mike reached out to John, and and for what Folky said, I think is John folks, and you know, hey, he, he accepted it, and uh, and you hate to see it, uh, but in the heat of battle, again, sometimes sometimes emotions can bring the, the you know those, the worst out in us at times. I mean, uh, but yeah, it's it's over with, it's done with, and we'll you know get on down the road. Hey, uh, Rick, obviously uh, they were doing that ball screen to get Vescovi on Jones, and uh, and then you put in games. But before that, you had is that why you were going with Plav six instead of Vescovi to try to figure out that matchup? And then beyond that, what has Plav six shown you here to, to to earn this opportunity, and how important might he be? Well, he's, he's shown us in the last – these two weeks off is when he's really – honestly, he's finally bought into exactly what we want him to do. And uh, – which is exciting. It really is. And, you know, sometimes it takes players a little bit longer. And his length was good. You know, we, we trust him now because he's buying into the role that we need him to play. And can he be big for us? Yes, he can. And I think he's going to leave here with a lot more confidence. And and uh, so, uh, yeah. But right now, again, all everybody's got to be up on deck ready to go. And um, I think those guys know that. And uh, – Again, we're disappointed. We really are because we came into this game fully expecting to win, even with the way it uh, without John being here. And I just really, again, the things, the mistakes that we are making right now, we can still fix them. But the competitive that we're the competitiveness that we're playing with, and the, and the determination and the prep in the last really two weeks has really gone to a level that we're excited about. Rob Lewis, Mike Wilson, and Wes Ruffin. Coach, just with the freshman, I mean, I know 
you're not in that game if, if they don't combine for 38 points. But how do you try to get the get them to balance? You know, being that that productive, but also you know limit limit the turnovers. That's 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 hard. That's hard because again, both of them are very unselfish players. Uh, both of them are very competitive, uh, but uh, they've added so much to us in terms of the mindset to be aggressive. I mean. They both of them they work their butts off on both ends of the court and they're they're learning. I mean they're I mean they're freshmen, but I would take their competitiveness and their aggressiveness. But I do think this that they'll look they'll look at this again and they they just got to eliminate the the turnovers where they're just fumbling the ball or they continue to drive into traffic and hold it too long and it's all fixable. And uh, like I said, they're both great teammates with these guys and. Their teammates believe in them. They trust them. I trust them. And uh, but uh, you know, it, it's a high level game today. It, this is a big boy game at a high level, and uh, and our guys fought, and they fought an older, experienced team, and uh, I think as hard as anybody could fight them. And uh, like I said, we had a chance. We, we we were right there, and we thought it'd be that kind of game. If you if you said coming into this, if we could be in that position in the last minute. The chance to take the lead, we say, let, let's start there and go. Rick, are you guys now headed to Knoxville and then Indianapolis, or, or what's the, the travel plan the next few We days? don't know. We'll talk about it. We'll get back to the hotel and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll do what, what we think is the right thing to do. We, we haven't discussed it because we were planning on playing tomorrow. Do you have a preference between, I mean, the options of going straight there, or going back? Is there an upside in, in either direction? Honestly, Mike, I don't know enough about it. I don't know what to, you know, we'll sit down with Reed and the administration and, and everybody. And again, I don't know what, what's set up there right now. I, I have no idea. So we'll, we'll just decide and uh, we'll go, we'll, we'll get back and we'll do that. The next probably couple hours. Rick, you said that the, that the guys on where the I am, I just too long. And I've had teams that have lost in the semifinals and have gone and made great runs. And and uh, Kim Ingham has talked about the same thing. I mean, hey, yeah, we want to win this. I, I've said it coming in this week. You want to be a champion. I don't care if it's a regular season, conference tournament champion. You want to be a champion. But the one you really want to be every year is in the big fight for the big one. That's I said that when I walked on this campus six years ago. I said it my entire career. We want to be a team that's in in in, the, in this tournament every year, and I've seen enough in my lifetime, more than these guys have known. But I've seen teams get it and go, and I like where our team is right now. And I'm not afraid to play whoever it is we got to play because I know what this team's going to do. They're going to play their hearts out, and they're going to they're going to go at it, and that's all we can expect from them. Last two go to Troy and Gustavo. Rick, you mentioned Devontae being a guy who doesn't play a lot. What is it about him that gave you the confidence to throw him out there in such a well, same thing, watch him do it in practice every day. You know, that's what he does. And we knew we had to get a stop there, and we knew he would do it. There's no doubt if, if one-on-one situation, if we could have put even that situation, we would have. We knew where, where he had to be, and we knew the next guy in line that would, would fight him every bounce, which he did four different times, and stay between him and the rim and then make the effort to go get it. There is no doubt you ask our team who day in and day out you know is going to – play his hard out, give you everything he can, it's ticket. And if you don't think they feel bad for him right now, I mean, they do because, uh, you know, he plays so hard and there's times that we love to get him out there, but then there's times when we struggle with scoring, which makes it difficult. But in that situation, we knew we had to get a stop. And, again, we said we're going to put our, arguably two of our best defenders in that situation on that switch. And, again, he did the job. Player of the year, he, he did the job. He guarded him as well as anybody four different times. And then he cleaned it up and came out with it. Coach, do you believe, you know, the way your team played yesterday and today surpassed the expectations you had, you know, coming to this SEC tournament? No, I, I don't think that. I mean, I, we expect to win every time we go on the floor. I, I don't, again, regardless of how we might be up and down, we're always thinking that up, it's going to be there. And and uh, this, this group of guys, and, They've proved they've proven to be resilient, and uh, again, 
again, I mean, I thought, you know, we, we had to guard the best, what arguably the two best offensive teams in the league. I mean, we guarded Florida twice and got two, two big wins and then came back today. And our defense put, definitely put us in a position to win it. And we can just get our offense, and you guys know it, clean it up a little bit. Yeah, we, we should feel good. We should feel good because of the mistakes that we were making here. But, again, we talk about it. We turn it over 19 times. They turn it over 17 times because it was that high level of a game. And, and uh, you go back, you know, uh, I think it was like 2.30 on the clock. Josiah had a great look at it. And, you know, I thought it was right. Right in front of me, I thought it was going in, and, and uh, but again, I, I'm just I can't say enough how proud I am with these guys. All right, thank you, everyone.